All right, so um, I want to preface that you are the divorce on the verge of getting divorced. You've been married 34 years. We've actually done a few videos with you. So I just want to, today is our third session together. And um, we're talking about how difficult this eating to hunger has been for you. And you had said to me, Robin, I am eating 90% of the time emotionally. I'm not hungry and I'm still eating. That's my observation before I started this. Oh, got it. Okay. Got it, got it, got it, got it. I probably slashed that in half, but but by the same token, it's not it's not done with. <laughs> yes, and you're you're finding there are certain things you're struggling to hold yourself accountable to that hunger for. And um I think it's really funny what you said to me to start. You you had said to me that if I had asked you two weeks ago if you knew what hunger felt like, what did you say? Of course. I mean... You said if two weeks ago you would have responded, yeah, absolutely, I know what hunger feels like, and that's how I eat, right? Yes. And now I want you to go back, and now that you've been doing this practice, you basically said, uh, no. I don't really know if I even, most of the time I don't, I'm not hungry. <laughs> yeah. And then I had said, oh yeah, well most people come in who say, yes, I eat to hunger. I, I hold my tongue because I already know they're so inaccurate. And it's hard to be like, oh no, 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 you have no idea. But once people come back, this is very common. They go, holy crap. Yes, I eat all the time and not because I'm hungry and I still have things to work on. So you and I were just coming to... Um, I was saying, well, what we want to do is get you to be stringent with eating to hunger prior to starting the protocol. And we're working ourselves that direction. And there's so much that you're learning. What, what we tend, what's not uncommon is that I see that I have patients who will not hold themselves to the hunger scale. They just give themselves all this lenience because they just don't, they don't feel like they have to, right? They give themselves all this grace, and then they say, "Well, if I go on the protocol, then I'll then I'll hold myself to the, to eating to hunger." And what they don't understand is by jumping into the protocol without thoroughly learning those going through the vulnerabilities that it requires to eat to hunger responsibly. Right, it's you're responsible and you're holding yourself to it. It's not easier on the protocol. It's not. It feels the same way. The benefit of doing it prior to starting the protocol is you develop a sense of personal responsibility. If you jump into the protocol without that, it's the protocol's responsibility. Basically what you're doing is saying, you know, the protocol has the strict rules enough that will keep me safe from myself. So you're leaning on the protocol to keep you responsible. How is that going to help you when you transition into the phase without the HCG? I'm gonna go back. Oh yeah, you're gonna, well, you're gonna feel vulnerable. You're gonna feel weak because you need the protocol to keep you safe from yourself and to keep you responsible to eating to hunger. So by eating to hunger and going through this learning curve, whether it's a week to two months, to really establish um, responsibility and eating within the body's realm of hunger, and eating foods that are, there's variety, right? We've talked about it's very important that while you're in this practice, you are holding yourself to the hunger scale with palatable foods, with foods that you feel really connect to that narcotic area of the brain, the pleasure center of the brain, right? Think about the strength you develop by eating those types of foods and holding yourself to the hunger scale. Consider the amount of self-confidence in your own abilities to eat in the world we live in and to use hunger and to keep yourself personally responsible without some diet and weight loss to motivate you. Consider how you would feel before starting the protocol. Oh, that would be a huge component. Oh, huge. What we've seen with that patience and work up ahead of time is that when people transition 
back slowly back into the real world they don't have the same fears they don't need to micromanage food they're they almost it, they almost have this unbelievable amount of confidence after the protocol because they're they've taken advantage of the very low calorie portion of the protocol to even make those senses more pure and more refined and more and they get so excited it's so exciting for them to transition into that second phase or p3 where we're adding fats they get oh they're so excited whereas the people who don't go through a thorough practice and learning curve and all those struggles that i'm asking you to do prior to they don't have excitement they have fear anxiety they are afraid to gain this weight back they're afraid to trust their bodies and what they're likely to do is latch onto a diet which will ultimately sabotage what what we just tried to accomplish with this detachment emotionally from food because if you're if you're going to a stringent diet in fear of gaining you're likely to not listen to the body you're likely to get too hungry you're likely to not eat palatable and not eat for pleasure and then you feel what when there's stress deprived so then you go ahead and you justify and rationalize and then you'll use the protocol as a justification you'll say you know what i can lose this weight with the protocol easy snap and people use the hunger scale as a justification so in this process between you and i my goal is to get you to where you need to be emotionally before you start the protocol and this is something i have really developed with time i've been monitoring patients through this protocol for close to seven years and i have changed over the last five years i i've made necessary changes as i'm learning as an instructor and i've just come to find that this preparatory phase is more important in your emotional recovery from food than the protocol is i can see that now i couldn't before so you, and what, what happens is people blindly just trust me because you came into the office thinking, I'm going to go on this protocol. I'm going to lose this weight. I'm going to feel better about myself. Right? Right. <sighs> Boy, did we do the bait and switch. <laughs> I was disappointed at the beginning. And then now it's like, it was probably the best thing. Yeah. Well... I, I, I always encourage this practice, but there are some people who really just need to jump into it. And what we find with those patients, because they're not willing to do this front work, they think the protocol will help them learn. They freak out. They actually get into it and go, oh my God, what am I doing? I'm not ready for this. I don't trust myself. Some of them back out and then continue to do practice. So it's one of those personal things. It, it really is. It's a personal growth. Some people really do need to just jump into it. And they, but I always forewarn you, you know who you are. You have to be giving yourself the grace then on the protocol. You really do need the grace to mess up because your likelihood of cheating is higher for sure. And if, it, and if you don't cheat, then your likelihood of screwing up in that transition or in the second phase or P3 is high. And their likelihood of gaining weight back because of that struggle is higher. So you really do need to give yourself the grace then, if you don't do that front work, to do it on the back side. To be honest with you, me personally, I learn through messing up. So I can't imagine what I would be like as a patient. I'm sure I'd be a nightmare. Because <laughs> I want to mess up. I got to get my feelings in it, right? So anyways, I'm really excited that you've taken this risk to do the practice up front. So how, how do you feel right now as far as like, do you want to just do it a week at a time, the practice? Just go, go again. We want to get you closer and closer to where you're not using food outside of hunger. I'm going to go with whatever you suggest. I... Okay, and what I'm suggesting is in relation to how you're doing in practice. So if you feel right now you're doing, you're about 40% uh, responsible with hunger, right? You're 40% accurate. There's 60% we still need to work in. I would say that, yes. Okay, let's, let's mentally prepare for another two weeks of this practice. However, this is really key. The speed at which you learn is relative to the, the responsibility you take. 
like, like you said, I, um, it's for this next week, I'm going to be a lot more stringent about it. I'm going to really evaluate before I do anything. I, and I do evaluate now, but it's not the, um, it's like, okay, um, I'm eating more portion. You said stop when you know you're full. Before you're full. I said before, before you're full, right? Okay. Well, I'm not doing that. Um, but, I, but I'm better than I was much. I mean, good. I'm you're getting there. So, food. so what would happen today if you actually stopped sooner than you wanted? Remember if, just think of what is it going to require on the protocol. You're going to have to do this anyways at some point. You're going to have to stop sooner than you want and observe how you feel. I want you to do it now so that you can gain this confidence now that, wow, I still felt great. I really didn't need it. That mouthy desire to keep on eating totally went away within 10 minutes. Unbelievable. What a great experience. That's what I want to hear. The other thing is by stopping earlier, you're going to learn, you're going to learn patience while you're eating. Patience is really important as you're learning because you want to give your body the time necessary to communicate to you. So eating slower, enjoying the food for a longer period of time, stopping sooner and sitting with it. Because your body's going to have a lag period after you stop to where the hormones are still responding. So you may stop and say, okay, I'm at a five. I know I'm not hungry, but I still have this gnawing. I, I still need a little bit more. I want to see how long it takes after you stop eating for you to feel like 20 minutes later. Do you feel a little more sated? So that back side of the hunger scale, I would, I believe is really what needs more time. Um, because the narcotic area of the brain is still getting pleasure, right? The, there is a difference in the beginning. When you're hungry, you're not getting this pleasure stimulus. So then you start eating and the hunger starts to go away, but this pleasure is being stimulated. So you really do have to give yourself a, a more time to learn this because you need to be able to differentiate pleasure and satisfaction through appetite and the removal of hunger. They're very different. And you need to be able to learn those two and differentiate between the two. That's yet again another reason why I say go into palatable food. We want you to be able to differentiate pleasure from hunger. And to know when to stop and to recognize and, and to see what happens after you stop. Part of what I'm, I'm wondering if you're going to deal with is a little bit of panic. A little bit of fear like, oh my gosh, I might not get this again. That's conditioning from dieting. What do you mean? A lot of times when people have been chronically dieting, they're afraid that they're not going to get it again. So they have to eat the whole thing because they might not get it for a while. Oh, I see. Yes. Yeah, there is a bit of that. I kind of had a feeling that that was the case. So I want you to just know that there is plenty of food available for you. With this practice, you have abundance of food. What are you going to do when the protocol's over? What are you going to do with those feelings? They'd come back up, wouldn't they? Don't, for sure. Don't, don't. I mean, this is really important. You figure this out. Otherwise, you need to be okay with regaining your body fat, right? Whatever you lose is going to come back because you're going to go back to these behaviors that you don't have a sense of confidence with. You just need to know, no matter when and no matter how, when holding yourself responsible to eat to hunger, you're going to go through this learning process and there's going to be some worry and pain. And it, at some point, it's going to have to happen. So by not doing it now, you're postponing it. You're waiting tomorrow. You're waiting for the following day. You need to get to where you're willing to hold yourself accountable to eating to hunger, whether you're on the protocol or not. And the sooner you make that decision, the sooner the growth in your confidence accelerates. So if you want to take time, that's fine. That you're basically saying, I want the lenience to not have to do this yet. That's okay. Give yourself the grace you need to feel comfortable to do it. But if you want to get, if you are, if you recognize that pain is pain, whether you do it now or tomorrow or three days from now, it's still going to be difficult for you and you're still going to have some insecurity. If you get that, then just do it today. Nothing's going to change between today and next week. Okay? Okay. How do you feel? Um, good. Very 
good. It's, um, I feel like if I was to do it this way. Yeah, I agree. It is going to be a better outcome because you're going to do the protocol, right? Absolutely. So it's going to happen. So let's do what we can now rather than doing it after. It's, <laughs> it's, it's far more beneficial to do it now than after from what we've observed. Absolutely. So, and at some point, yeah, just get to where you're really on a day-to-day -day basis doing what we're asking you to do and holding yourself to it. And you're going to get to the point within yourself that you go, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. You're not going to need me to tell you. You're going to go, yes, I am super confident. I, I'm really, really excited. So, when that point comes, we're just going to continue to have this conversation. Um, and you're going to have questions for me. You're going to say, okay, well, what about this? And I tried this out and, you know, I, I really did wait. And I noticed this, you know, like it's not uncommon for me to hear, I did, I'm surprised I'm not eating. There's like an eight hour period. I'm not hungry. That's just shocking to me. Is this okay? And I'm going to say, yes, this is common. I hear it all the time. Just do what your body says. Let's find yeah, out what happens. And that, and that was something I was going to ask you about. <laughs> Isn't it incredible? <laughs> so well, how long is it between your actual spacing of eating when you eat to hunger? Um, sometimes 12 hours. <laughs> it just seems really strange. Well, you're inflamed, honey. And don't forget, if you're still overeating in the moments you do eat, that... That's gonna have it's gonna last. So okay. if you'd actually eat to hunger responsibly, right? Then then it, then it might be different. But we're not gonna know until you hold yourself to it. I hear you. <laughs> yeah, and aren't you kind of curious? Yes, very much so. So let's do it. You know, I, I know. use the example in weight loss apocalypse of if we didn't have access and abundance to food at our fingertips, how would you prioritize eating? Would you eat because you were afraid you might get hungry? No, not at all. <laughs> I know. See how quickly your logic was so like, no, right? There's no emotion at that point. You don't have the lenience to eat more than you can. There's no, you wouldn't do it, right? Notice how you just immediately held yourself responsible. It's a frame of mind. It has nothing to do with the food you're eating. It has everything to do with your frame of mind. You're giving yourself lenience because you have the luxury, right? You have the luxury of it. This, this is, I'm sorry, this is potato. That's cute. <laughs> yeah, he's a good boy. He's a good boy. Yes, I love you, Bobby. <laughs> okay. All right, sorry. Um, so witness that. Like seriously, okay. if all of a sudden... Something happened and food isn't abundant and you can't reach it ever. You can't. What happens to this emotional game you're playing? It takes the emotion out of it. And is it hard? No. <laughs> I know. You see the framework, the frame of mind. The problem is you're, you're still giving yourself like an out. You're still enabling yourself at this point. So as soon as you say, you know what, not an option, I'm not going to do it. You're going to be, you're going to have a different experience. It, you will, and you're going to actually get an authentic view of how your body is working, right? Can't say, I see that. That's, that's encouraging. I think so too, because it's really a matter of you deciding. It's not a matter of me telling you. It's your decision, not mine. No, but I, I never looked at your, you're forcing me to look at the issue and it's so much clearer than what I thought it was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what happens when you actually go, when you, you commit to yourself, I'm not going to eat unless I'm actually stinking hungry and I'm not going to eat more than my body says, and kind of like rationing. You're going to give yourself a very steep learning curve. It's going to get very steep. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's not the way people think at all. <laughs> no, no, everything, 
everything that this culture for the most part is dealing with is only there because we have immediate access to food. We wouldn't have, we wouldn't have half as much culture, food cultures. We wouldn't have similar, you know, food ethics. None of it would actually be occurring. All of this manipulation to try to lose fat wouldn't be there. No one would be, you would take anything and ration it. Because really when it comes down to it, the how much we dis, you know discriminate against food is only because we have this massive amount of abundance. Everything we're doing is a byproduct of abundance. And it would be useless, useless if we just didn't have the abundance. So if we can get you into a frame of mind to live in this abundance and to be able to Use your body as its guide within the abundance. You don't have to, but you know what? You're going to choose to. You wouldn't have the emotional neediness because it wouldn't be available to you. You would be forced to deal with your emotional insecurities, right? There's so much that you would be forced to just do now, just in that choice, just in that frame of mind. It'd be now. Why are you waiting for cataclysm to basically say you're, you're, Get perspective now and let's move forward. You need to get your yo's. Okay, we'll talk in a second. Okay. Okay. I'm good. <laughs> you feel good? Do we need more? Yes. No, well, why don't we talk and let's talk by Friday. Let's see how you do. Let's get it. Let's give you a few days. Today's Tuesday. Let's talk on Friday and see how you've done in just a few days. Okay. And let's make this um, do what you just. Actually, Friday, Friday doesn't work. <laughs> How is, um, well, Thursday, I could do it Thursday if that worked for you. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it.